Have you ever bought a set of golf clubs based on looks alone? Because if you have, then these will certainly be top of the list in terms of how they look, but in terms of how they play, well, that's a different question. I'm gonna test a set of irons that I would love to buy, love to have in the bag, I love the look of, but I don't think I'm good enough to play with them. This is the biggest shock I've had since testing clubs. I can't believe that. Oh my God, three solid shots there. I can't believe how well I'm hitting these, you know. Honestly, I'm so shocked. My favourite set of irons that I ever owned were from Mizuno. They were a set of MP5. They're blades effectively, top line, nothing of them, no markings whatsoever. They looked absolutely pure. And to this day, I still regret getting rid of those irons. And I got rid of them because I was kind of uh, chasing these words like forgiveness and uh, I suppose looking for irons that gave me help with off center hits that's what that that's what that thing's all about forgiveness chasing forgiveness but sometimes what that really means is that you're looking for an easy way out so i ended up playing different irons with bigger sweet spots but i still love those mp5s and even in those difficult rounds when i was struggling to find the middle they still gave me that encouragement and enthusiasm rather to play the game because as soon as i see those shiny clubs in the bag i just wanted to hit them i wanted that pure strike that came around every now and again and that's exactly what i'm expecting from these irons that i'm about to test this morning so what is the club in question well it's this from cobra this uh, ricky fowler model of uh, mb forge it is a stunning copper finish i've seen plenty of images of this thing online but i've never actually seen it in the flesh and when we took a little bit of a walk around the um the fitting bay at four golf here this morning i was drawn to this thing like a magpie it looks absolutely stunning but then the big question that uh, i want to answer is how come the wrapper is still on and that really begs the question kind of it's been sat in there a couple of months no one has even so much as tried this iron like i said the polythene wrapper is still on we'll be the first one to give it a go and it begs the question for me is that with an iron that is so small in profile, the top line is as thin as I've ever seen an iron being produced in the last how many years? Is there still a place for this kind of club in the modern day marketplace? I'll tell you what we'll do. I'm gonna collect data very, very soon, but I'm gonna take this uh, wrapper off. I've also got to take the, uh, the wrapper off the shaft as well because we've put a, so we've got a KBS, um, just a reg shaft in these this morning, KBS 90. I'll take that off as well. And what I'm going to tell you is the uh, very first shot of the day, because often the thing of sort of, well, blades of old that I would associate this kind of thing with is that uh, first shot of the morning was always the toughest in finding the middle, and you certainly got to feel about it. I cannot tell you how compact this iron is from the top line. I don't think there is another iron on the market that is as thin as it. A few practice swings. This is the one. Oh, well, you can hear that, that was absolutely pure. What unreal feel that is from the first shot of the day. I'll carry on collecting some data. That one's put a smile on my face because honestly, that was so soft. A little bit of matte with that one, but that wasn't too bad either. Right, I'll collect data and just see how tough this thing is and whether there's any reality as to A, could I put them in the bag and B, as to why they continue to manufacture irons like this for the general market. Oh, I'm well impressed so far. Right, there's a few things I want to just go through with you in terms of uh, well, technical spec, price, and also some comments made from people who've tried these before on uh, Cobra's website. Um, it is effectively, like you said, it's a purely forged iron. There's some tungsten weighting, uh, which is positioned out to toe to center. Um, on Ricky Fowler's request. Uh, I'm certainly liking the way it's uh, put together anyway. It certainly suggests it's aimed at a handicap of player, which always amazes me this is, because uh, it's such a small and minute category. Handicap suggestion is between naught and three. So clearly, if that was the, um, if that was the criteria, then I wouldn't even, shouldn't even be trying these things. 
Um, there's zero offset, and I'm assuming that's through the set because there's no mention of it whatsoever. Mid to low launch. Um, in terms of the seven iron, it's 34 degrees, four iron 24, and a traditional pitching wedge up there at 46. So again, very much traditionally lofted in terms of uh, where they all sit. But this is the bit that interests me the most. Uh, I read a couple of reviews that are customer reviews, and the first thing that I noted was these are the most forgiving blades I've ever used. To me, they have similar forgiveness to my CBs. That's the first comment I read. And then the second bit was that some guy went in to test the King uh, Mim Tor and a couple of others player CBs. But after the fitter handed me these, they were amazing and distance was only a few yards shorter. That's the bit that shocks me just so far testing them, how well they've performed. But in terms of yet again, if you were led by the criteria that's suggested by the manufacturer, then I, and probably most of you, wouldn't go anywhere near these things. Right, so I've collected data, and before I go in and uh, have a look at that and find out exactly what is wrong with these irons in terms of capability versus what you'd actually like to have in the bag, there'll be some telltale signs, I would imagine, but like I said, quite surprised so far. I wanna ask you a question. What's the most difficult iron you've ever played in sort of your golfing career? Why did you move away from them or have you currently got them in the bag? Do you miss them? All those things that, like I said, for me, uh, going back to those MP5, really miss that iron. But I will say this is even more compact again. And from a looks perspective, I mentioned it very briefly when I started this in some balls, that top line is the biggest thing that puts people off. But I'm wondering, and based on my performance this morning with the club, is it because the iron is so small and compact? Is it because that kind of hitting area is so much smaller than you used to see it? Is that just a little bit more concentrates the mind a little bit? And are we actually finding the center of that club more than I would be necessarily on a bigger faced sort of game improvement iron? That's the question it's asked me because out of, I'm just looking at the screen, quite a lot of shots. I have, would say that I've pretty much found the sweet spot. It's felt really good off the face, but a little bit of drop off in when, I, when I've not got it quite right. But I think that'd be the same for pretty much any iron that you use. And like I said, from those two comments I read from people who've purchased them, I think they were as shocked as I am. Uh, really, really impressed. But more importantly, I think surprised. I really would like the idea of being able to try and play um, a longer iron. That's my only concern. How would I get on with perhaps a sort of five iron, certainly four iron start to struggle? Would that be a major issue? But then for me, would I really be looking at maybe playing, uh, you know, hybrids and even fairway woods at that stage? I don't know. But yet again, and I hope you pick up a bit of audio, these are absolute pure feeling irons. From a forging perspective, they're as good of an iron as I've played in terms of feel, and that puts Mizuno right into that category. Nothing feels like a Mizuno. Well, I think Cobra's forged MB has put itself right in that sort of category. Honestly, really, really good. Right, okay, so testing done, you know I'm fairly surprised, uh, but here is the numbers, and like I said, over quite a, uh, a vast amount of shots. I'll throw up first of all what the averages are and then maybe break it down. So we got an average of, would you believe, off a 34 degree seven iron, 154 carry, 6,300 revs of spin, um, 112 ball speed on average, 19.9 launch, 94 peak height, descent angle of 48.5. 
I love those numbers, really, really good. Like I said, in seeing the ball out there, it's, uh, it's, it's high launching. It said mid to low launch. Well, certainly the way I was hitting the seven iron, the way I deliver a club, it launched fairly high, but I love the ball flight, to be honest with you. Spin number was really, really good and what you'd expect from very much those traditional numbers in terms of loft for the iron. Before I go through uh, all the different numbers, and I'll perhaps throw them up at the very end, otherwise it'll get a bit monotonous, me going through every shot that I hit. I'll throw up the dispersion chart now. And what you'll see is a real tight grouping on that left-hand side. I was hitting a bit of a right-to-left shot. Perhaps turned them over a little bit. We had the 90-gram 90 uh, 90 gram, uh, reg shaft. Probably would have changed the shaft up a little bit. But anyway, uh, you see that grouping really, really good on what is effectively, I don't know what's that, about 10 shots, uh, really good. A couple on that 160 mark again. Happy with all those. And then we just got the drop off of about six shots, I think, roughly counting there that you'll see. And that was the difference. I think we averaged between sort of that high, sort of 155 to almost 160. That was the major grouping that I got in terms of the numbers, really, really consistent. And I suppose what you'd argue is, then there was the drop off to the other group of numbers where they're 146, 147. There's a few in there, 144 even. Now, maybe that is the issue that you would say why a player like me and of my capability would perhaps choose not to hit these. My argument would be, I think that you would get probably similar drop-offs in a game improvement iron in the same way. So it's all proportionate. But I suppose the other flip side of the coin might be that if we did the same test with the game improvement iron, the drop-offs wouldn't be quite so significant because the sweet spot might be that little bit bigger. I don't know. That's uh, a big, broad test to do. All I can tell you is I was really surprised on how easy these were to hit. I played the, or tried the Callaway Apex MBs, I think they're called. I might be wrong with that. But basically the blade of the new Callaways, and I really struggled with it. I found it very difficult to use indeed. I couldn't have been any different this morning with this MB Forge from Cobra. It could well be that we just had a nice little combination in that shaft, I don't know, maybe that did work. It could well be that was swinging well this morning. But all I can report back is that, I think, don't be dismissed by categories of clubs that the manufacturers put them into. This idea of a player's iron, a game improvement iron, blah, 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 I hate all that. Pick one off the shelf that you like the look of, give it a go because, and if you find out you're not good enough for it, then fair enough. But the point is we dismiss, I'd have dismissed this out of hand by looking at it and I would really consider playing it. That's how shocked I was in terms of how, it wasn't easy, that's the, always the wrong word to use, but I had more than enough capability the way I struck the irons this morning suggest I could handle those irons, no problem whatsoever. Anyway, that's it, job done. Uh, a little one that's later on the scene in terms of uh, maybe a bit of a niche market, but a real interesting review from my perspective. So I hope you enjoyed it too. Uh, as ever, comments down below. Don't forget what irons have you tried that you're perhaps uh, glad to see the back of in terms of how difficult they were or you wish you still had them in the bag. Stick that in the comments down below. Hit that thumbs up button. And uh, if you don't subscribe already, then please do so. It's a massive help to uh, the growth of this channel. And I'll see you all very, very soon. Peace out.